Hi everyone, uh, I'm Eric Barker, Dean of the Purdue College of Pharmacy, and thank you for watching yet another one of our videos where we dive deep into the details of Purdue Pharmacy. Today we're actually going to talk about admissions to Purdue University. I'm with Mitch Warren, Director of Admissions for Purdue University, and people probably wonder about the mystery of admissions a little bit, and that's what we're going to talk about, and thank you for being with us and sharing a little bit about Purdue admissions and what it looks like uh, for folks to get into Purdue and then ultimately the College of Pharmacy. So I'm going to just jump in. Many of our prospective students and their families are probably thinking and wondering about how the admissions process works at Purdue. So can you give us a brief overview of Purdue admissions and what they should expect? Of course. I think one of the things that's somewhat surprising to families is that we truly do what's called an individual and holistic review. And I'm going to flip the, the question just a little bit because sometimes students ask, what's the minimum? What's the minimum grade point average? What's the minimum test score? And the assumption is there's an X. And if you have above <laughs> X, you could be admitted. And unfortunately, if you have below X, you, you would not be. There isn't an X. There are real people reading everything that's sent in for a student. And we look first and foremost at the courses a student has taken in high school relative to what was available within the, the chosen school. We'd like to see rigor in courses within reason. It doesn't mean that a student needs to have taken every IB or AP or, or honors course that's available, but we'd like to see that they've challenged themselves. And, and I don't want to mislead students or families. It, it's not the grade point average that matters so much. It's individual grades in individual courses that we're looking for, and especially those courses that most closely correspond to the student's intended major, things that would be very similar to the courses they would be taking here at Purdue. Um, so the courses, the grades the students have received are paramount when we're making a decision. We also utilize standardized test scores, either SAT or ACT. There's no preference in one over the other. Some students happen to have both. That's okay, too. Uh, we do what's commonly known in the admissions world as super score. So we'll pick and choose courses from, or I'm sorry, test scores from different test dates if a student has taken one of the tests multiple times or if they've taken each of the tests. We'll, we'll choose whatever's best for them. And they don't have to worry about doing the math. We'll, we'll figure that out on the back end. I think the part that's probably most intriguing and, and somewhat surprising to many students is that we also look at co-curricular activities and things that happen outside the classroom. And that might be in the school. Students might be involved in theatrical things at their school, musical things, first robotics competition, athletic team, student government. But also outside the school, some students are involved as a, a youth soccer coach, some um, have helped their grandpa restore a, a Mustang in the garage, some need to work part-time or enjoy working part-time. All of those things are taken into consideration. Uh, I always suggest to families if you can think of the college admissions portion, especially this part from our perspective, we're attempting to build a community. And it's a community of scholars, but also a community of scholars who come from a wide, wide variety of backgrounds and experiences. So certainly those co-curricular activities play a part. And, and then finally, written statements, and those are things that the student has written, essays uh, particularly, uh, and letters of recommendation. Uh, although letters aren't required, they can be really quite helpful. Um, especially as students are considering their essays, one of the, the pieces we always like to advise is we're not looking for the most perfectly crafted written statement that a student has ever provided. It, it is part of the application, so it's best to, to check it and have somebody else read it. It's not a time to use acronyms. Uh, I would suggest that you don't refer to us as bro <laughs> as you're working through the statement. It, it's a little more formal yeah. than that, but I think students spend an inordinate amount of time, probably oftentimes too much time, crafting the essay, and, and really that's only a very, very small part of the process. Let's move a little further down the timeline then. Someone's been accepted <coughs> to Purdue. Mm -hmm. When should they plan to accept the offer? How should they think about coming to visit, or when should they come to visit campus, and how do they get additional resources? Of course. So high school students will find out whether or not they have been admitted January 15th of their senior year in high school. And at Purdue, they have fully until May 1st mm -hmm. of their senior year in high school to decide if this is the institution they, they choose to attend or not. Um, we love for students who are admitted January 15th to decide on January 16th 
that produce their, their plays. But students fully have until May 1st, and there are no advantages to deciding early or later. So they should take whatever time they need to do that. How they might gather the information to make a determination certainly can be a visit to campus. If they've not yet had an opportunity to visit, we would certainly encourage them to do that. We have a, a variety of specialized visit programs. There are multiple visit programs most every Monday through Friday, barring holidays and, and times when our students aren't here to, to provide tours. Uh, some of the programs are dedicated to admitted students, some are a little more general, uh, some obviously are going to be based on the family schedule and what, what makes sense. There is a ton of information that is sent centrally from the Office of Admissions to help families with information and um, opportunities to book the visit and information they might need relative to making a selection and of course the college to which a student has been admitted, pharmacy in this case, also sends information to students. It can be an incredibly um, complex decision though. So we certainly understand when it's not real clear and if families need to reach out via telephone calls or certainly coming to visit and meeting with somebody, folks in the College of Pharmacy are more than willing to meet with individual students and families and of course we are at admissions and our colleagues in financial aid are as well and we're happy to have individual conversations. Well you mentioned financial aid. One of the things that's on many families' minds, certainly parents' minds and mm -hmm. students, is paying for college and so let's chat just a little bit about some of the financial aid opportunities and perhaps the uh, income share agreement or back a boiler program that we have mm -hmm. here at Purdue. Sure. So of course costs sometimes are, are paramount mm -hmm. for, for students and, and costs can be somewhat prohibitive for some families. We certainly understand the complexities of, of cost and of aid. At Purdue we always encourage families to complete the free application for federal student aid. Uh, which is available for students beginning in October of their senior year in high school, but there are college cost estimators available through uh, the Division of Financial Aid website or the admission site that students can complete prior to being admitted and even prior to being a high school senior. Uh, the estimator will give them a rough estimate of need and merit-based aid for which they might qualify. The free application for federal student aid is the, the actual form to apply. Um, when students who apply by November 1st of their senior year, they are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. Merit-based aid has nothing to do with the family's financial situation, but is based on courses, grades, test scores, co-curricular activities, kind of the things we covered mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, I'm always a little bit hesitant to talk much about uh, merit-based aid because roughly only 8 to 10 percent of a typical incoming class qualifies for a merit scholarship, but, but nonetheless, there, there obviously are, are many students who do. The Back of Boiler program is an income share agreement. Uh, for high school students coming in, I wouldn't worry about it a lot right now because it's not available until you are a rising sophomore or junior or senior here on campus, so it's not something for which you would qualify during your first year at Purdue. But basically, it's a way to share future income and not have to worry about repayment of traditional loans for students and, and there are outside partners outside of the university who have made this possible for students. Great. Well, we are committed to an affordable pharmacy education. It's one of our uh, hallmarks uh, of our program. We think that we're probably the most affordable top ten pharmacy program out there and, and so these issues are really important to us and we know they're important to families. Thank you for being with us uh, today, course. sharing a little bit of the details about admissions at Purdue and hopefully the families and the students find this information really, really helpful. So again, if you'd like some additional information, you can always check out the website. You can find us on social media. You can contact our Office of Student Services at pharmacy-oss at purdue.edu. Thanks for watching.